If you knew that you could experience the best life ever, would you try? Are you heading along the right path in life? Welcome to Change Your Mind, Change Your Life with your hosts, Jim and Lynn Swearingen. Many of us suffer from the emotional trauma of past events. Uh, we're trying to move forward in our lives with emotional scars that just keep holding us back. Well, today we're going to explore how hypnosis can heal emotional pain and give your life back to you. Yes, and today we're happy to have Debbie, Debbie Livingston Boucher with us once more. Debbie has been practicing and teaching meditation and hypnotism since 1982 with students and clients around the world. She's won numerous awards, enjoys the great respect of her peers. Most importantly today, Debbie has spent many years perfecting the affective bridge, a very powerful and effective emotional releasing technique in hypnotherapy. I think all of our listeners will really appreciate your perspectives on emotional release and hypnosis, Debbie. Welcome to our show. Well, Debbie. thank you for having me back, you guys. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Would you tell us a little about your life and background prior to learning hypnosis? Sure. Um, I was always sort of on a spiritual quest. I was raised Catholic. I grew up in an alcoholic family. I always sort of knew there was more than I could put my fingers on and see with my eyes. And that brought me on to this um, spiritual quest that I was on, which brought me to um, the foundation that I spent many years of my life learning about meditation, inner healing, and helping others. So it was while I was in this metaphysical teaching that my teacher mentor brought classical hypnosis into the school because the whole um, premise is that in order to do any kind of metaphysical work, you need to be in a light trance state to do it. So that was um, my first introduction to hypnosis was in the um, helping out with the metaphysical work that I was doing through meditating and things like that. I had previously was sort of afraid of hypnosis. I had so many misunderstandings about it that I thought it was mind control. I thought I was going to be putting a part of my brain to sleep forever that somebody else was going to have control over. And then, of course, as we learn and we all know, it wasn't any of that. I still recall the very first experience I had with my teacher when he you know, guided me into a classical state of hypnosis. When I came back out of trance, I remember the first thing was, I said was, this is what I've been looking for my entire life. And it was really the missing link for me in my spiritual journey, my beliefs that I have on you know, spiritual levels. It was the missing link that really bridged that together for me. And um, so that was sort of my background before I got into hypnosis. I was already in a teaching that involved meditation and things like that. So you sort of had your own epic bridge between... You know, when emotions. I said that, I just realized that. Yeah, it's like it bridged. Hey, wait a minute. Spiritual bridge. Exactly. Right. <laughs> That's a, you know, the epic bridge. I've used the epic bridge many times after you taught it to me. It's just a wonderful technique of getting into people's uh, problems and helping them get, get, them, get them straightened out. The Epic Bridge is uh, just a marvelous tool. It really is. It's just amazing um, how powerful it is. And I just, I mean, I, I use it. It's what I mainly focus on. And it's what I really, you know, in my practice, I, I do, I work mainly with emotional regression work. Mm -hmm. And um, because I tend to be emotional once in a while, so I thought I might as well use it. <laughs> so, right. Um, yes, yeah, so it's very powerful. Um, <laughs> Well, Go that ahead. brings up the, uh, another question. Um, once you found out about how effective this was, did you use hypnosis for any personal issues for yourself that you could share? Oh, my gosh. I totally did because once I, you know, I really got what I call, and you guys have heard me say in classes, trans fever, where I just, I loved going into hypnosis. I loved how good I felt afterwards, and I was definitely applying it to personal issues in my life. I used it for, on physical issues, I used to have wicked allergies. Um, I grew up on the East Coast on a farm. I was allergic to everything. And my allergies came back in my adult years living in the Bay Area for some reason. And I used to host a radio show on an AM frequency called Total Prosperity. And my allergies were so bad that people would call me up and tell me what to do with my allergies. <laughs> 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 With the hypnosis, it wasn't even, the session was not even about hypnosis, but my teacher said to me, oh, and by the way, you have no more allergies, you're free of them. And this was given to me in hypnosis, and, and I 
really haven't been bothered with allergies since. And it wasn't even something I thought I was going to be getting rid of. It's amazing. Um, you know, another physical issue that I, I cleared up, it's, it's one of, you know, it's, it's my non-glorious story, but I was chronically constipated my whole life, which definitely goes back to being raised in an alcoholic family and just holding on emotionally, which we'll talk about later. But, um, and with hypnosis, it, the issue completely cleared up just out of one session. So for physical issues, it works fantastic. For emotional issues that we're going to be talking about, I was able to overcome um, an extremely unhealthy, abusive relationship. Um, it just really helps you transform and rise above pretty much any circumstances that you have. And that's why we really wanted to make sure, you know, we, we be, before we created the hypnosis school that I had that I had directed for so long, my teacher and I really wanted to make sure that what we were teaching in the courses was real. And so we did a lot of research and we decided that the National Guild of Hypnotists, which is whom I represent, which is you two, you two are graduates and, and members of the National Guild as well, we found that out of all the other guilds and, and factions of hypnosis out there, the National Guild offered the most for their members they had the most comprehensive training out of all the other groups and organizations that we investigated and looked into. So before we started opening up the doors to offer hypnosis training, we really wanted to know that what they said in the, you know, in the program worked. So my teacher spent hours and hours and hours working with me, even going through the glossary of words that you know are in, the, are in our manuals of hypnosis, to see if everything they said really did work, which is, you know, the affect grid. Do you really do regress emotionally to a, a, another time in your life? Um, revivification. Can you really go back to a time in your life, let's say being 10 years old, when you have no conscious memory of what happened from the time you're 10 to the time that you're, you know, 30 or 40, because you're back at being 10 years old and that's all you know. You and, know the, I'm sorry. Ahead. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. Well, I was going to say, and yes, all that does work, and, and we did it with ourselves. You know, I, you know, I, I was walked through so much inner work just to make sure that when we did offer a training, I want to make sure I'm giving, you know, the people who are coming to me for a vocation, I want to make sure they get the best training possible. To me, it's not about just taking somebody's money. Okay, now you have my therapist go out and you'll have fun. I really wanted to make sure the students knew what they were doing and how powerful this modality is to create change and really help people overcome a lot of. Um, blocked traumatic sometimes issues one of the that you were talking about physical issues mm -hmm. and i remember that you did a regression for jim when he was taking the class mm -hmm. he has for the listeners he has emphysema and copd a lot of trouble breathing and you when you regressed him he actually went back to events that he had completely forgotten mm -hmm. um, that had impacted him uh, no, he wasn't going to be completely healed from physical problems. He has to deal with that every day. Hypnosis has helped him to get a handle on it, and he can speak to that in a second. But he, but what is helpful is when you know where it's coming from. You know, he went, you regressed him, and he remembered people. Uh, uh, I, I think, honey, you remembered a doctor talking to your mother outside of a hospital room after pneumonia, saying right. he has lung scarring. He's never going to breathe without having difficulty and that was wow. implanted he's always going to have trouble breathing and that was in his subconscious mind making it worse right right exactly and that's that's what it's all about is trying to get back to to normalcy and yeah, and, and jim think about it <laughs> excuse me you were in the hospital yes mm -hmm. when you heard the doctor say that right so anytime somebody's already in like um has been in an accident or anything like that, they're already in a trance state. Right. So your subconscious mind was wide open to taking those suggestions by who? The authority figure, the doctor. Right, right. right. So your conscious mind said, whoa, whoa, readily let that idea go right in because that's the authority figure and I'm already in trauma. I know it. And I think fortunately, I think now in hospital settings, I think doctors and nurses are a little bit more aware of this, especially with people like you coming in and doing hypnosis. I think they're a lot more... Uh, conscious of where they're talking about patients and who can overhear them because of that. They are they are beginning to get more conscious, and I believe there's still a lot of work to go. But um, I've done a lot of um, acute care hypnosis in hospital settings, um, in um, ICUs, and even at hospice and things like that. And 
sometimes I just really have to pull the doctors and nurses out of the room and say, listen, when you're in this room with this person, you need to be talking in a certain way. Right. And, uh, but, yeah, it's much more open than I think it was you know, many years back. Mm-hmm. And the other thing you touched on that is, really strikes home with both of us, uh, with our clients, most people come in knowing that something is wrong, and they either say they have no idea why they're reacting the way they are, so that makes the affect bridge effective to go and find out why, but a lot of them come in thinking it's one thing and it's really something else. And exactly. Uh, it takes sometimes uh, a couple of sessions to even find, to even realize uh, that this is an entirely different thing that we're dealing with, and the affect bridge goes back to that very effectively. It's, yeah, because you know our conscious mind doesn't remember everything that we've been through in our life. If we remembered everything we ever experienced, we'd we'd be wiggy, we'd go we'd go batty because it's too much information. But because our subconscious mind stores all of our life experiences in it as memory, and not just in sight and sound, but as the emotional levels of intensities, once once an emotion is sort of programmed in the subconscious mind on a particular situation that program's going to stay there until we change the program. So that's why, as you said, Lynn, people can be coming to us as adults with these uncomfortable feelings or like fears or phobias that make no sense to their conscious mind whatsoever. I have no idea why I'm so petrified to get onto an elevator when I've never, you know, been hurt on an elevator before or what. Then when we bring them into their subconscious mind, attached to those feelings and they bridge back, then, then that's where the, they're so amazed. It's because they had no idea where that original picture came from. Uh-huh. And it, it, it's power. It's empowering. One, it, one of them, just want to say real quick, one of the other reasons why the ethic bridge can be so much more powerful than, let's say, um, I don't want to say regular regression because I don't know if anything like regular regression exists, but you know, a lot of times you can do regression work without tapping into the feelings that the client is having around the situation. And the reason I believe dealing with the emotions is so much more powerful is that any time there's pain or fear in a body, that individual is not going to want to embrace their body and be in it to face those, fa- those pains or fear pictures. So if you have somebody regress and they're a non-visual person also, they may not know where they are. They may have regressed or they may be looking for something, but because they're not a visual person, they may not be seeing anything. Or if there's fear or pain, they don't want to go find out what that is. Mm -hmm. But when they come to you with a presenting problem and they tell you, I get a nervous feeling in my stomach every time I have to talk to a group of people at my job, then you can latch on to that feeling because when we have them focusing on that feeling in their body, they're bringing their attention back to their body, which is where they need to be, to bust through the energy, to clear those blocks. So that's why it's that much more important is because they're actually getting into their body and addressing the uncomfortable feeling. It's, it's more than just like putting a Band-Aid over it. And you know, it's, it's important for the listeners to realize that it doesn't necessarily have to be a big major trauma that we're dealing with. Um, we, we get people that have trouble with public speaking, which you just broke, brought up. Someone can come in here and say, you know, I've, I'm, I have a master's degree. I love talking about my work. I know my stuff. I could give you this whole presentation. But when I get in front of a group, my heart races and I get sweaty palms and I forget everything. Why is this mm-hmm. happening to me? And mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be a big deal. It could just be that that person forgot the line to a play when they were in school and all the kids laughed at them. Mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. just saps them with that imprint. and then Yeah, I actually had a client very similar to that where um, she had been promoted in her job and had to do teaching now within her company. She was, you know, to different, you know, wherever the different offices were around the Bay Area in Northern California, she had to start doing um, presentations. And she said the first two that she did, almost exactly as you described, it was like a deer in the headlights where, she forgot what she was supposed to say. Her heart raced. Her voice and her mouth went dry. So bringing up those uncomfortable feelings in the session. Now, they weren't like life-threatening feelings, like you said. It wasn't like her life was going to just stop if she, if she had these feelings. But she needed to be good at what she did with her job. So she did go back to, with a feeling, she went back to being in first grade. And it was parent-teacher day. And she had to give a, um, sing a nursery rhyme up in, in front of the classroom. And she got the words. And... Uh-huh. The parents and the kids laughed. 
And she was able to see with her adult awareness on using trans logic that, oh my gosh, they weren't laughing at me, especially the adults. They were laughing because I was cute, because I laugh at my niece and nephew when they do cute things also. Mm -hmm. So she was able to rationalize from trance that they weren't laughing at her, they were laughing with her because she was cute. And I said, well, while you're there, go ahead and sing the song. And she sang the nursery rhyme perfectly. And she hadn't thought since, I think, first grade what that nursery rhyme was that she was supposed to sing. And then from trance, you know, she was able to put in the feelings that she wanted to feel when she was standing in front of the classroom teaching. And, you know, it's powerful. It's very, very powerful. Because we can sometimes see where a feeling can get so blown out of proportion, so to speak, that we have this crippling fear or this crippling, uncomfortable feeling that blocks us. And then when we go back and see where it actually came from, it's like, wow, is that all that was? <laughs> that was nothing. And yet it had been affecting our entire life. So that's why it's so powerful for people to really see um, that things may not be as bad as they think they are. As you know, Healed Heart Hypnosis is a newer venture of mine. Um, I had been involved in a hypnosis school for many years, and in June, the universe kind of reshuffled my deck of cards and said it's time to go do something new. So Healed Heart Hypnosis was birthed from that. And yeah, I've really been reflecting and meditating a lot on just the affect bridge and hypnosis. I mentioned earlier I grew up in an alcoholic family, which makes me an official ACOA or an adult child of an alcoholic. And I had thought, and I'm doing my little quote fingers with my fingers, I had thought I had sort of worked a lot on those issues that ACOA individuals carry, such as um, like low self-esteem, not wanting to rock the boat for people, making sure everybody's okay, putting yourself on the list last, making, you know, being an, an overachiever, working really hard and all that. I thought I'd really done a lot of work on myself with that because of all the hypnosis work I had done. And when I resigned from my nonprofit organization that I had been involved in for 30 years and then went on to start Healed Heart Hypnosis, I started recognizing that, wow, in 10 years I kind of morphed back into a lot of the ACOA traits. And how did that happen to me? And I was fascinated. So I've been developing a program where I've now been working mainly with ACOAs, adult children of alcoholics, um, using the Ethic Bridge, creating this whole program where they're seeing how from the time they were born in this um, alcoholic or any kind of substance abuse family, how from the time they're born, their subconscious mind is already imprinted to have a life of dysfunction, chaos, guilt, things like that. And so using the Ethic Bridge, it's been very powerful for the people that I've been working with now to really go back and see where these imprints have been controlling their entire life, even if they are the most successful business people, because I'm working with a very high-profile business person who's highly successful in what they do, but have been carrying these ACOA traits with them that sort of come out in other areas of their life. So that's one of the things that I've been doing. And I'm also on staff at Options Recovery Services in Berkeley. Options Recovery Services is an incredible um, organization that basically, you know, rehabilitates alcoholics, drug addicts, things like that. It was founded by a woman named Davida Cody, and her and her husband, Tom Gorham, um, run this program. And, you know, they go into prisons and get people there. So it's this incredible program. And I started off with options many years back as their smoking cessation hypnotist because they offer transitional housing. And, but you can't smoke to be in this transitional housing, but most addicts and alcoholics smoke as part of their, you know, smoking is one of their addictions that they have. Right. So that's how I got into options after having three sessions with me out of 62 men, they were able to place all but 14 into this transitional housing wow. because they all became non-smokers. Wow. And, Amazing. Yeah. So now I go to options. I'm, I do group hypnosis sessions and I also do private sessions with the options clients, helping them dealing with the uncomfortable issues and just helping them stay motivated on their path with sobriety. I come from an alcoholic home, too. Uh, and I know just exactly what you mean when you say that the child is, is hurt in that. It's a wonderful story. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, um, post-traumatic you never know when the next explosion is going to hit. I mean, there's so many interrelated issues that for anybody listening who is a hypnotherapist, it's an incredible... Um, one of the largest subcultures in our society to work with, ACOAs and um, 
there's a lot of work that can be done to help these people. Oh, it's huge. And they're very, I doubt if there are very many hypnotists working with them either. They're very lucky to have you doing this. It's really, yeah, that has become sort of my, my newest passion. I believe in having more than just one passion in life, and this has become one of them. <laughs> oh, good for you. Yeah. You know, the other thing that I've been working with as far as, you know, with hypnosis and the ethic bridge is I do a lot of manifestation work. And, um, what's, what's that, Debbie? Manifestation. manifestation. Helping people manifest the life that they really want to be living. Ah. Um, not the life that they randomly get, get thrown at them, but really showing people how to use the law of attraction in a positive way. You know, the truth is the law of attraction is always working for us. The law of attraction is simply, you know, what you're really thinking and feeling is what you're going to be attracting to you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think the law of attraction is, oh, I'm going to think a positive thought and I'm going to get rich and wealthy. No. Every time you think a thought, you're sending, a, a, you're sending a, your recipe out to the universe of what you want to be experiencing. So using hypnosis, I help people go into their subconscious mind, uncover all the blocks that say they can't prosper, whether it's financially, mentally, spiritually, or physically, helping them release the blocks that say they can't prosper, helping them to release the uncomfortable feelings that they might have around bringing more um, abundance into their life, and then really helping them to map out the life of their dreams with whatever that means for them. And um, case in point, right before this radio show started today, you know, my husband and I have been um, looking at manifesting another vehicle because we're, you know, we only have one and anyways, la, la, la. And we were just like, okay, whatever the universe wants to bring to us, you know, we know it's going to be perfect. And right now, before the radio show, I was out getting, um, you know, my new vehicle. I found I have a new car now. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> a, a really fast manifestation that I wasn't even really expecting. But because I've been doing the inner work, releasing uncomfortable feelings around getting a car and all that, the universe just brought it right in. So that's another main bulk of the work that I do with clients is working on prosperity issues. Great. It's amazing. And it that- is amazing. And that circles right back to the affect bridge. Um, a lot of people come in that um, have been in bad relationships or, and they, they're afraid of being alone, but they're afraid of putting themselves out there because they keep attracting. Uh, I'm a magnet for the wrong men is yep. what I hear. Yep. And the affect bridge helps them to release. They're attracting what they're thinking and feeling, like you just said. Exactly. And the affect bridge is a very powerful tool to help them release the hold that those negative emotions have on them from things that have happened in the past and just free them up so they can move on to be the person that they were meant to be. Exactly. And Most it's, definitely. It's just amazing. It, just, they, it, it helps them to reframe everything in a positive way, to stop negative self-talk to themselves. Yep. It's just self self love they can't do they can't achieve their goals they can't move forward they can't do anything that they want to do with their lives until they learn how to love themselves first and release all of that from the past and just move forward as the person they were meant to be exactly Lynn I, that's just so right on and that is, isn't that the beauty of our profession is that we can really help people do that mm-hmm. yeah I was working with a client this morning on Skype and you know, she was on the East Coast, and she was just, you know, she's, her issue was around weight, but she had all this other, of course, connecting issues to it. And just by being able to be guided to a place inside of herself and allowing that vibration of love to flow just through her so she could experience that vibration, for her, that was like a miracle. Um, but so often we forget that, you know, we don't have to be in a official one-on-one relationship to allow that vibration of love to flow through us because... And I believe love is the most powerful healing vibration in the universe. It'll lock, it'll knock any kind of negative vibration down. So when we learn how to bring that vibration into us, whether you know you want to think of you know whatever the love and belief is that you have in a higher power, or maybe a pet, you know, your favorite <laughs> pet, anything to get that vibration moving is going to be healing and changing in itself. You know, yeah, you got to love yourself first, but then you got to reach out and, and love those around you. If you're going to fulfill your life's dreams. Exactly, exactly. Learning how to do that without giving yourself away. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no. Finish up. I know you've had some really great client examples. Uh, you use the affect bridge all the time. I, I'm, a, I'm always amazed that, I mean, people, people, one, one lady comes to mind immediately. She came to me telling me she was afraid to drive, so she had a driving phobia. I don't know exactly what that 
the Latin form of that would be. <laughs> but uh, she had this phobia about driving. Come to find out she was, she had a phobia about driving because she was lost herself and she, she wanted to find her way out and be able to drive her own car and uh, figuratively is what I mean. So she finally found out that she was looking for herself instead of her driving skills. She said, she's quite an interesting case. Wow. Many, many more. Yeah. Many more. Yeah. She, uh, I, I think one of the most powerful examples I've ever seen of the affect bridge was actually when I was learning to be a hypnotist in your class. Uh, you, you gave a demonstration with one of your clients who generously agreed to come in and do this publicly. I, I was amazed. And she came in feeling, if I'm remembering this right, she was felt like she had to be in control all the time, that she had to handle everything, she had to do everything herself, take care of everything. And she had no idea why. And she, when you regressed her, she found out, she went back to a really traumatic, devastating experience when one of her parents, I think her father died. And oh, her mother remember had that? Well, her mother had committed suicide. Oh, that's it. Her mother had committed suicide, yeah. and her father fell apart, and yeah, her so brother was useless. Yep. She had to do everything, and she was very young. She had to make the arrangements. She had to prop everybody up emotionally. She had to take care of all these other people falling apart, and she couldn't deal with She had probably never dealt with the grief in a, herself in the way that she needed to. And so she, for the rest of her life until that day, she felt like it was all on her. She had to do everything, save everybody, take care of everything. And she cried her eyes out and she, right. when she realized and relived that event. And then you helped her release all of those emotions right in front of us. We saw her lifted right out of that chair. She was so <laughs> relieved and so happy when it was over. Yeah, it's incredible. That's you know that's the thing. As a facilitator, is you never know where you're going to go in an affect bridge regression. Right. A lot of hypnotherapists um, are afraid to use the affect bridge because they are afraid of having the client have an ab reaction. But as you guys know from your training, there really isn't anything to be afraid of. The client oftentimes needs to go back and re-experience in a safe place that traumatic and the trauma of all those emotions to clear consciousness. Right. And, um, you know, when you're trained and you learn how not to be afraid of the client doing that, you're really creating a haven of healing for that client to come in and have an experience with you. And I know just by being in the office that the two of you have in San Francisco, that's a haven in your office. When your clients walk in there, I already know from me having been there and visited the, your office, it feels safe. It's comfortable. It is just set up to be this cozy environment that you feel safe to go inside and explore your deepest inner issues, not just in a room that's comfortable, but with the two of you who are so compassionate with what you do. Oh, that's a wonderful compliment. Thank you, Debbie. It's very nice of you to say that. Uh, that's what we're going for, a nice, yeah. peaceful, quiet, safe place where people can relax. Uh, Jim got the most wonderful compliment ever a few years ago. Uh, a woman said that she had been... Uh, she, she wrote a testimonial and she had been sexually abused and she never in her wildest dreams would feel that she think that she could feel safe and comfortable and be vulnerable in an office with another with a man Wow nobody else here just an audio, uh, audio tape recording that we do just to show you know that everybody knows what's been said and done for liability purposes, mm -hmm. her, only, her only umbrella there that she was aware of, and she felt completely safe and able to open up and be vulnerable and explore what had happened to her, and it, that, that was great. That's probably like the highest compliment you can get as a facilitator is when people can feel safe like that with you, and you know, sometimes I'm thinking, oh, I'd love to interv interview you two on your show because you both have such interesting backgrounds, but... You know, Jim, I know that your background is being, you know, you were an Episcopalian priest before. And so, right. um, you know, when you were taking my certification course, there was, a, there was another person in that class who was also uncomfortable with men. Not that, you know, obviously not the person Lynn's talking about, but I remember there was another fellow student in that class. And when you worked with her, right, those barriers just were able to come down and she was able to have some real breakthrough experiences also. And... You know, coming from your background and then the work that you do, you know, you're more from the corporate background. 
So, right? Am I correct mm-hmm. in saying that? So yeah. you being able to have the understanding, you know, which is something I don't have of how the corporate world works, but you can really, you know, you, you can help and you are helping so many people from that background who come in stressed out and like no permission to look anything but perfect because they're in that corporate setting. Mm-hmm. So you have that background, you understand how they work. So interesting. Well, we're getting along toward the end of the show, and it's and not. I got us off track as usual. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> I love getting off track. Um, we before the show ends, we want to take care of some housekeeping because I know people out there are interested. Uh, first of all, we want to find out how they can contact you if they want a session, how they can contact us, and we also want to give us a little preview of the show next week. So, Debbie. Where, give it, let everybody know where you are and how they can reach you if they need you. Excellent. The easiest way to, easiest way to find me is simply go to healedhearthypnosis.com. And that will bring you to my blog site. I have some videos of myself up there. And it will also let you see the link to my website. But the easiest thing to remember, healedhearthypnosis.com. My cell phone, 510-685-5505. HealedHeartHypnosis.com. We have just a minute before Please. closing, and we really want to thank you, Debbie, for coming on the show. Debbie, thank again. you so much. Thank you for having me. It's just so much fun to be able to be a part of um, this venture that you guys are doing. I'm just so happy for the both of you. And um, yeah, I'd love to be a guest again. And you know, for anybody who is listening, Lynn and Jim are two of the most just warm hearted people that you could ever meet. And I'm not just saying this, but it's just really. They have compassion, they've got information, they've got the heart, and they've got the great space. And just really, you know, you guys owe it to yourself to check out what they're doing because um, I know you can get help with Lynn and Jim. Thank you, Debbie. And that goes double for you, too.